Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 121. This episode is with Lori Wyman, who's just awesome. She is a multiple award-winning casting director who's been in the business for a long time and has done some really, really cool stuff. She was so nice, and we talked about like living through these crazy times, you know, the pandemic and the quarantine and how like this may change the way that casting is done in the future, because who knows what's going on? No one. Uh, we talk about how Lori is actually from Miami Beach and what that was like growing up so close to the beach and how times have changed. We talk about how she first got into casting, how casting has changed over the years. We talk about her working on Miami Vice, like the Miami Vice. Yeah, Lori did casting on that. Super cool. Uh, we talk about her sticking up for her actors. We talk about uh, the Florida tax incentives when those were lost, how that affected the Florida film business. We talk about her casting process, which was really cool. And then she tells a story about the greatest casting trick she ever pulled. It's fantastic. We talk about common mistakes that actors make. Uh, she teaches classes on auditioning, which I highly recommend. Uh, but Lori's just awesome. She's really, really cool. She's been in the business for so long, and her experience gives her uh, this kind of viewpoint that you don't hear a lot about. From the casting director side, we talk about how intuition is such a big part of what comes into play when it comes to casting for things. And it was just cool. It was cool getting to know her. It was cool getting to hear about her process. And you're going to enjoy it. So let's just jump right into it. Please enjoy The Interesting Podcast, episode number 121 with Lori Wyman. Theme song time. such a crazy situation that like nobody is prepared mm -hmm. for so at the very least you mm -hmm. got to try and make the best out of it from your end you know i totally agree yeah especially in your position totally where you're doing agree. so many things all the time that like it's got to be nice to be able to do what you normally do but also like breathe you know <laughs> it, it uh, you know i'm doing a, i'm actually i almost feel like i'm doing a lot more i do um every thursday at two o'clock i do a a free Zoom session, a Q and A with the actors. Love it. Um, a lot of the actors wanted to know about taking classes, so I'm actually teaching three days a week: Tuesday night, Wednesday afternoon, and Thursday night. Wow! And that's a lot. I yeah. never teach. I, <laughs> I, I teach, but I teach one class a week. I don't teach three. I mean, that would be insane. Yeah. And of course, I put these three classes together. I said, "All right, well, that's enough." And then this week. I got a casting for a commercial, I got a casting for a movie, and I got a casting for a television series. Wow. And, I mean, none of them are like giant, you know, none of them are like, you know, big Warner Brothers, you know, yeah, that sure. magnitude. But it's still work. I was on the phone with my assistant before. I called you going over the breakdown for the movie, and let's fine-tune this, and let's fine-tune that, and blah, blah, blah. And, and you know, we... Um, um, it's still, it's still, we're working, you know? Yeah. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I thought I would be teaching so that I would like not be doing anything during the day. <laughs> I said, all right, well, I'll teach at night. That'll be fine. But that's okay because, because being, just being home, there's a sense of um, calmness. Yeah. Where I'm home and if I find that I've got two hours in the afternoon between, let's say, the podcast and the four o'clock class, mm -hmm. I could go lay down and take a nap if I want. Yeah, there you go. I can't really do that at the office. You know, the <laughs> office is like perpetual motion. Sure, sure, that's work. You know, and then when I'm te when I'm working during the day, and let's say I teach at night at six thirty, mm -hmm. which is usually mm -hmm. when I start to teach it when I'm there in person. If I'm at the office, I don't go home. I don't like leave the house, the office at like six to race home to teach. Yeah, <laughs> I stay. Sure. And even if it's on online, even if it's on Zoom, I go till whatever time it is nine thirty, ten o'clock, and then I've got to get in the car and drive home. Right. You know, whereas here, if I'm doing a Zoom and I don't get off till 
to 10 o'clock at night, 10 after 10, I say, all right, good night, everybody. I hit, you know, leave meeting and I'm home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, it's just, a, you know, there's just, it's just a certain amount of peacefulness in a lot of that. Yeah. It also, I imagine, yeah, like, but... scratches that itch because a lot of people I find that work in the entertainment industry, they have, they, you have so much drive, right? It's so, like, you got to be able to do something. But then with the quarantine, right. you're like, everything's closed, production's down. Uh, what do I do? But things have been popping up to occupy the time, but within your comfort zone mm -hmm. of your home. It's it's such a weird thing to do. But it, it's working. It's working for a yeah. lot of people. It's pretty cool. It's great. And I know for me, I'm always frustrated because I'm gone all day. And by the time I get home at night at whatever time it is, 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night, sometimes mm -hmm. 11 o'clock at night, I get home and I go, oh, I really need to clean out that drawer. I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. And, you know, six <laughs> months later, I can't, I, I can't even open the drawer now because it's, you know. And just being home, if I have 20 minutes, I've already done one, one cleaning thing today, mm -hmm. you know. If I've got 15 minutes, 20 minutes, I go, you know what, I'm going to clean a bathroom. There you go. Or, you know what, I'm going to empty a drawer because you have it. And then you feel accomplished right. and you feel, and then at least at the end of the day, you're not like so frustrated by going, oh gosh, would somebody clean out my closet for me, please? Yeah. <laughs> because I can't keep my eyes open. Right. You know, when you get home at night, I can't keep my eyes open at, uh, at, yeah. at 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night after I've been gone since 8 30 in the morning yeah yeah and so, you don't, you don't anyway want to be by a drawer. i like i said i hate to uh to say that to people but um and i know it's a terrible thing because so many people are just getting so sick i know i mean it's a big deal it's crazy it's a it's a giant it's, deal it's almost like that when you have that sort of guilt like the guilt of success you know what i mean it's like when, yes. you, when you reach a point, you're like, oh, man, it's like this, this, but also the reality of everything else not being the same as it is for me. It, being a human being mm -hmm. is hard, Lori. <laughs> I, I, yeah, yeah, what a shame. Being yeah. Human being. But yeah, but I know what you mean. You know, like things are going really, really well for me. And, you know, several of my friends are, you know, just they've they're they're going bankrupt and they're getting divorced and yeah. um, they're losing their house you know what i mean and and so you feel guilty oh yeah when they say how are you you feel guilty going great yeah <laughs> you know i said something to a friend of mine the other day i said i'm really i'm have, i'm really enjoying and she just like no, not really started yelling at me, but started yelling at me like mock yelling. She goes, oh, sure, you're doing great. You're doing great. That's because you don't have my situation. You know, right. it was kind of like tongue in cheek in a way. But I said to her, well, I'm sorry. She goes, no, 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 I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm like, well, kind of you are. Yeah. Kind of you're not. <laughs> you're like, I, you're like, I heard the truth in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hear you. I know. I'm married to a nurse. Oh, Lord. So oh, when, no. whenever she comes home, I'm like, she's like, how was your day? I was like, my day was great. All right. Like I, I broke something, but I'll tell you about it tomorrow because I know your day was kind of rough. Uh, what can I get you? Oh, where is she a nurse? Here in Naples. It's it, like it, an uh, it, assisted living. Is it living. a nursing home? Oh, she's it's, a nurse at that. Yeah. She does like um, post rehab. So like people that go into surgery when they come out, she's the nurse that like takes care of them in the process from out of surgery back into the world. She's at hospital well, in the area. Well, that's a better yeah, nurse oh, for sure. situation than in a hospital with a thousand COVID patients. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Things got crazy. Right, well, they had a they had a positive case like a month ago, and then everything just right. changed. It was like, all right, we're shutting this down. We're doing this, and she was like, uh, okay. And I was like, hey, do you want eggs? How can I help? <laughs> Aww. Yeah. My dad is in an assisted living facility, oh, right. and he's 93, and we Ooh. haven't been able to see him now for, mm, well, it's been almost two months, because his birthday was March 18, Ooh, that's when it and went we down. were going to have a big party for him, Yeah, and they there was going to be like 10 of us, It was um, because at that time, that's when they started saying, you cannot have you know, large groups of people. Right. So 10 people was too overwhelming. So we could visit him individually at the time, like oh. right when it was starting. And then they pulled that 
my because my sister went to see him the day before his birthday, and I think I went to see him two days before his birthday, and we weren't able to do the big birthday party that we had planned. And then right after that, March 18th, right after that, it was like, shut the doors, yeah. nobody allowed in. And I said, well, can we take him out? Like, maybe I could take him out for dinner. They said, if you take somebody out of here, you cannot bring them back. Oh, no. Well, they, ha- they had makes, to do that because it makes sense. if, yeah. God forbid, somebody brought it in, yeah. they could wipe out the whole place. It's true. They're, they're in that bracket of Very like, scary. if you get it, it's done so. They have, they've had a case. My dad's on the one side of the building. He's just, you know, like, because physically he's not in great shape. The other side of the building are the people, they call it memory care. Oh, yeah. You know, people with Alzheimer's. Mm-hmm. And they found one case oh, over there. Sucks. Jeez. And we got an email, you know, we just want to let you know. My, I thought my sister was going to have a cow. Get her on the phone. Get the yeah. woman on the phone. And <laughs> I want to know, is it the nurse that takes care of him? I mean, she was, like, panicky. Sure. And the nurse, uh, the head of the facility said they believed it wasn't one of their workers they believed that this this particular woman had a private duty nurse oh that makes sense and they believed that yeah that private duty nurse so but but as soon as this one woman was tested positive this one patient they they got her out of there and so so far that facility is clean Ooh. And we can't Ooh. visit him. I, I actually I visited him. He um, <laughs> he's on the third floor of a building of of the building, his, his, the, which is the top floor. He overlooks like a little grassy area and a lake. Nice. And so my daughter and I went over there, and we went out back, like down below his window, mm-hmm. and we called him. There you like, go. Dad, look downstairs. Look down. And he looked down. And he goes. Oh, who, what am I looking at? I'm like, us. <laughs> goes, That's you? So we were waving. Oh, I see you waving, he said. You know, So I was like, let me see you waving so we could see him. But eh, that's like the best that we've gotten. Yeah. it's so. Cr- I'm so interested to see like what the other side of this looks like. You know, because I, I like shaking hands. Mm. I like hugging people. But now I'm like, is that a thing? Mm-mm. You know, it's a, it's like my brain now is wired to be like, no. <laughs> don't it's, touch don't go near exactly social distance at all I times know. you know wear a mask all the time i'm like okay got it got it i understood yeah it's i'm, I'm i i do i'm uh, same i'm i'm very interested to see what this looks like from like a mental standpoint on the other side but we'll see yeah. we'll see and when I, when i go out you know if you go to i because i go to Publix like once every week and a half yeah same i'm i'm not yeah, you know, I used to go to Publix, you know, in the morning and the afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> <Now. coughs> you yeah. know, we just keep making our list. It's like, all right, okay, we're finally out of like everything. Now yep. we go to Publix. Yep. But um, but I laugh because I'm in there. You know, you have the the mask on. If you wear glasses, you know, you're like, oh yeah. No, you have no more face. And I'll see people walking around, and I'll look and I'll go to myself. What if I know who that is? Like, I don't know who anybody <laughs> is because I can't see their face. But right. you know what I'm saying? Like. Like right before this, I was in uh, the same Publix, and I ran into a guy that I knew from probably forty years ago mm-hmm. or more. And uh, you know, kid, I, I grew up with. I say a kid, you know, yeah. guy I grew up with. <laughs> and he walked up to me. He's like, "Lori," and I'm looking at his face. I'm like, "I think I know you. I'm not sure." <laughs> and then we started chatting. But if you've got a mask on, it's true. You don't know who anybody is. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like I should wear a t-shirt. Yeah. Hi, it's Lori Wyman. Yeah. <laughs> it you becomes know? it becomes a new game where you're like, okay, and how many guesses can I figure out who this person is? Like Bill, oh, Tom, you. Ted, Bob, Michael. <laughs> it's like you'll get there eventually. Right. That's funny. Well, where are you hunkered down? My house is in East Hollywood. Oh, right on. East you're still Hollywood, in Florida. Florida. Yeah. Cool. Cool. And the other side of the state from you yeah i am very familiar with that drive about two two and a half hours i'd say yep yep it's not bad it's not bad after working all night though it uh it turns into a bit of a bit of a debate on the way back you're like oh just keep on going yeah i know i know i know i know i i i was uh doing something over there and i had to drive back yeah <laughs> i remember i was alone yep. i was driving a galley 
and you're not going to stop. Nope. There's nowhere to stop. Right? Nope. And it's like, call every you know and get somebody to talk to you. You know, like keep you awake. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Are, so are you are you from Florida? Does it feel Miami. Like, mm-hmm. Really? I don't, think uh-huh. I don't think I've ever talked to anyone who's from Miami. Because so many people are I from know. up north I... and they come down, you know? Uh-huh. I know. Where are you from? Are you you're not from Naples? Uh, no. Uh, I, I was originally from North Carolina. No, mo- Where? Uh, the Outer Banks. I was born in Elizabeth City. Oh. We have a house in North Carolina. Oh, no way. And that's my... Yeah. yeah uh, that's that's where I will be as soon as I escape here. Yeah, there you I'm go. I'm not sure when... Yeah, we have it, though. We're on the opposite side of the state from where you were. We are uh, right before the Tennessee border all the way uh, west. Oh, right. So, you so know, you're like in the mountains. You know where Asheville is. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Where Asheville is? Yeah, yeah. You know, Asheville is off of I-26. Yep. So um, you go I-26, and you just keep going west until you get to right before the Tennessee border. Nice. And that's my exit. That's a good spot. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful up there. Yeah, good view of the mountains. And right now they have... Oh yeah, we are. We have a log home, and the nice. the view out back is a mountain view. Sure, really lovely. And they have zero cases of the virus yeah. up there in the county <laughs> we live. Sure, that's. I mean, that's important nowadays. Do you find that growing up in Florida, because it's definitely true for me, that you kind of uh, take advantage of being so close to the beaches that we have? Because I find that I like mountains and forests so much better because. The beaches have been right here. Oh yeah, yes and no. I I grew up on the beach. I mean, I grew up every day, every day. I mean, I think about what I used to do growing up, and now I wouldn't even drive it. Yeah. <laughs> every day after school, I get home, I grab something to eat, I meet my girlfriend on our bicycles, there and we go. would ride to the beach. And it was it was a good ride. I mean, it was a good distance. And we did this every day. And on the weekends, we'd ride our bikes to the beach and park on the beach and then hang out on the beach and then ride home in bikinis. Oh. I mean, but but you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. now, I mean, I would go out in a bikini. I was, you know, you'd, you'd get in your bikini and you'd ride to the beach. And then on the way home, you'd say, oh, let's stop at Ecker Drug or let's stop at, you know, yeah. The grocery store to pick something up, and you'd walk in. I mean, just, just the thought of it is horrifying <laughs> now. But you know, you'd walk in with your bikini, or maybe you'd wrap your beach towel around your waist or something. But, but, um, so I did the beach. We had a pool in the house when I, where I grew up. So nice. You know, it was either in the pool or at the beach or riding my bike, or always outdoors. So. Um, and I love the mountains, but I, last year it was Christmas time mm-hmm. and we always go up at Christmas time and it's beautiful and yeah. it's white and it's cold and it's freezing and it's yeah really cold and it's slippery if it's snowing. And my niece posted a picture on Facebook or Instagram, one of them, and it was a picture of her on a balcony. I guess they had gone away for the weekend on a balcony overlooking the ocean. So the picture she took was her point of view, you know, looking out onto this beautiful ocean. Mm -hmm. And I looked at that picture and I said to myself, if I had a choice, because see, I have the best of both worlds now. Right. If I had a choice, I've got to either pick the mountains or the beach. So I have a choice. I can't do both. Which one would I pick? I I, I presented that to me and I, I picked the beach. Really? Yeah. It's ingrained. I love love the heat. I love the heat. I love the water. I just, if I have a choice, if I have to make a choice. Right. However, when I go up to North Carolina and I'm driving, I, I went up, uh, I don't know, last year, I went up alone. Oh, it was October. Mm-hmm. I went up by myself. I don't normally go by myself. I either go up with a friend, I meet a friend there, or I go with my family. I don't normally just go by myself. Right. 
But some, for some reason, I just decided to do that in October. And then I was kicking myself, like, what are you doing? Why do you need to go up? What do you, why are you going, you know? Yeah, what is going so, on? <laughs> why did I just, So I flew, and then I rented a car, and as I was driving through the mountains, as I was getting closer to the exit, there was this, I, I don't know, this unbelievable peace that just washed over me. Yeah. And I said, oh, that's why I came up here. Mm. I mean, it was just an amazing feeling. I don't even, I don't even know if I've ever felt it before, but as I'm driving, all of a sudden it was just was like, whoosh, like all the stress left me and it was just so peaceful. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> it was like just, you know, spiritual massage, if you will. Yeah. And it was really awesome. And um, I do love it up there. I, my friends are like, you're going to move. You're going to move. I said, I can't. I cannot move because I cannot do those winters. Yeah. I mean, I can Same. do them for a week. Same. I can do them for two weeks. That winter, I can't do those winters. Nope. Me neither. My blood's thinned no. out. Can't yeah, well, you're from the East Coast. So yep. you're, I mean, the East Coast of, you know, um, Wilmington, you know, near yep. North, yep. North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and t- that's, that gets uh, feet of snow where you're at. Ooh. Snow, that, yeah, snow's and cold. I, when I went up on that trip, it, no, when did I go? Oh, I went, oh, I went in March. Ooh. I went in March. Oh, it was March 6th. That's what it was because it was my girlfriend's birthday. And she lives in my community where I live. So I I went up in March with a I met a friend there and then my friend left and I stayed for a few more days. I said oh, I'll go my girlfriend's birthday. I, I planned a little surprise with her husband and I was gonna show up and surprise and you know she was so excited <laughs> and I and as I started driving inside my community I was probably driving ten miles an hour something not mm-hmm. not faster than that. Sure. And as I came around a little curve, the car I had a um, what did I have? Some big four wheel drive something. Mm-hmm. Some I rented a, a big boat four with wheel wheels. drive something. Yeah, and it yeah. was a four wheel drive, not even an all wheel drive, four wheel drive. Nice. And as I came around the curve, when I tell you, Brian, that car started slipping and sliding all over oh, the road, no. and my brain was like oh my god oh my god because because yeah i could have fallen off the side of the road right and or smashed into the the mountain on the other side of the road and it starts you know like like slipping sliding yeah and i looked down and, and at the four-wheel drive button whatever and i sl- and i hit the word lock i like twisted it and hit the word lock thank you god a million times i hit the word lock and all four tires locked up Ooh. And the car stopped. And I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh my. And when I'm up there, my phone doesn't work. Oh, so no. I'm in a car. So I have no phone. I'm slipping and sliding. I'm too far to walk home. I'm too far to walk to her place. It's it's starting to get dark. It's about 6 o'clock. Yeah. I'm minutes away from her house. I'm not far. And then I thought, what the hell do I do? Do I sit here? Do I just sit here? Yeah. Do I wait for somebody to maybe come, and I decided it worked out, but I don't know if this was the, th- the thing to do. But I, I basically lifted my foot off the accelerator and moved two inches and stopped. Lifted my foot off the accelerator, moved two inches and stopped. There you go. That's how I drove to her house, barely two inches, three inches at a moment. Yeah, and when I got there at six twenty, which I should have gotten there at six oh one, yeah, you know, from six to literally two six oh two, by the time I got there at like six twenty, her husband was waiting outside because we were surprising him. Her husband, he goes, "What happened?" I go, "Oh my god, I'm not leaving. I'm I- I'm spending the night. Yeah, I'm not leaving. <laughs> no, literally. Smart. By that point, it was starting to get dark, and and I said, I'm spending the night, and I'll borrow a t-shirt or whatever." And, um, and I, and that's what I did. Cause I said, ah, please don't make me, please don't make me drive home, yeah. <laughs> you know, especially in the pitch black. And the next day we waited until the afternoon when the sun had come out and melted a good percentage. Mm-hmm. And then they basically like, they went ahead of me and they said, follow us. And 
you know, we'll we'll pave the way. So if there's an issue, and there was not an issue, but scared the living daylights out of me. Oh, I bet. And uh, and that is why I will never <laughs> live there full time. <laughs> That's a good reason. That's a good reason. Yeah. It's a, I always say it's snow. Scary. Snow is very pretty in pictures. What the picture doesn't say is uh-huh. how cold it is. You know, like it's long cold periods of time. And dangerous. And it's so dangerous. Like, and also, how would you know what to do in that situation? You know, it's it's. Bonkers. I wouldn't. It's bonkers. I know how to drive in the rain. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> we, we grew we got up a lot in of the practice. rain. Yeah. But a lot of people don't know how to drive in the rain. Yeah, it's true. It's, well, some people yeah. down here don't know how to drive in the rain. <laughs> All right, let, just, just, let, we'll just stop. Don't know yeah. how to drive. Yeah. We'll just stop it right there. <laughs> yeah, I know. Absolutely right. Oh, man. So well, tell me, what what is this podcast? It's this. For or about or <laughs> so the, this was it? Okay. Yeah, I, so okay. I this gets all edited later on. But like the, the show, I've been doing it for about four and a half years now. It's a show like I grew up, my dad... Uh, he's one of those people that's lived like 20 different lives and has done every job imaginable, sailed the world. Like he's just that guy. So I grew up, I grew up hearing stories about cool things people had done. And so one day I was like, I think, I think I want to start a podcast. And they were like, what are you going to do? And I was like, I I just like to talk. I like people. I like people a lot. I like getting to know them as people and, uh, you know, just hearing their stories and just connecting on a human level. So that's, that's what I've been doing. And then uh, I, I came across you a while ago, and I was like, you know, I bet Lori's super interesting as a person. And uh, so far, I was Aww. right. <laughs> Thanks. Are you, so you're not in the film business or anything? Uh, yeah, I'm an actor during the day, and I uh, have a Oh, okay, job. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it's fun I thought maybe thing. you, like, you know, randomly, <laughs> like, yeah. oh, I think I'll try that. I pulled out the phone book, and I closed my eyes, and wherever my finger and landed, that's what we did. <laughs> that's, that's not a bad thing to do sometimes. Yeah, it worked out. It worked out. But I, I know when I found out that, like, yeah, just now, like, you're from Miami. I was like, I have never met anyone who's from Miami. So, boom, that's enough for me. And then knowing all the there work you that you've done as well. Like, what I'm interested in is you, so you're going to the beach every day and you're living the Miami lifestyle. So when did your interest in entertainment start? Because you've been in entertainment oh. for a long time been killing it i've been yeah i'm making my living in entertainment since i got out of college but when i was a little kid you know i was that little kid that was in the school plays and oh cool you know so i always loved that always always loved it my mother was a she was into music she was a music major really teacher my pat my father my father he was not in the business of music but Mm -hmm. he played the piano my dad was like the, the thespian in his college, he was the lead in all his school plays. So nice. that was his thing. But then, you know, when he got out of school, it was like, oh, yeah, no, you're not going to be an yeah. actor. <laughs> no. You know, you're going to be like a business person. Sure. So he did that. And, um, but yeah, but I was just, I was always interested in the performing arts. Yeah. And then... When I went to college, I majored in speech and communications, which nice. basically prepares you for nothing exactly yeah. right. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Yeah. So you, um, so then I got out of college, and it's like, okay, now what do I do? You know, like, oh, yeah. oh my. And uh, and I was very lucky because. Um, one of the professors, I graduated from the University of Miami, mm-hmm. and one of the professors had made an announcement in her class that the ta- this talent agency called Act One, which was the top talent agency probably in the state, was looking for somebody to do filing and typing. Oh, right on. Right. So I'm like, well, you know, I just graduated from University of Miami. I was, you know, all that in a bag of chips. Yeah. But... I said, I know that in order to get in this business, somehow you have to start at the bottom. That's true. So I called the company name, and I called the name, and I um, went and had an appointment, and I met with the two ladies who owned the agency. And here I am with my little skirt, and 
I, I know exactly. I can visualize what I was wearing. I was wearing, <laughs> I was wearing a little skirt. I was wearing a white blouse and a vest. I was wearing oh, like a black skirt and a black perfect. vest. Cute. And stockings. And I had these black shoes with these, these like rubber heels, some kind of rubber heel that was popular back then. Yeah. My little briefcase. And oh, a resume that genius. basically had nothing on it, you know, <laughs> like I was, but I went in looking very, you know, very polished and I was a college graduate. There you go. And, uh, yeah. they hired me. They hired me. And what I didn't know until much later is we used to get people who would come in to interview for jobs, not actors, but just like someone to interview for the kind of job that I, they would come in. Literally, I had a girl come in to interview for a job barefoot <laughs> i'm like is that re like really so after i would see how all these people would come in like so scruffy and you'd say do you have a resume and like a resume right. you know <laughs> and i and i thought oh my gosh when i walked in they must have thought <laughs> they must have thought oh my gosh yeah <laughs> we've got like a real human being you know <laughs> she's wearing and, shoes um, <laughs> shoes and clothes and 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 she she brushed her hair and yeah it was it was no wonder why they hired me like they scooped me up right away yeah. and uh and I had a great education I worked there for like 5 years I met so many people that I am still friends with today and that was a long time ago um there the woman who is in charge of the BMG talent agency down in yeah. Miami, and she also runs Peggy McKinley. She was my first boss. Oh, right on. So Peggy McKinley, uh huh. Peggy and her partner, who is not not in in the business at all now, but Peggy was my first boss, and um, yeah. So there's people from way back then who my I'm still in touch with. There's people from way back then that I've lost touch with and reconnected with recently. Um. It was a great education, and then I went from doing that, which was working as an agent, mm -hmm. I decided I wanted to be a casting director. I wanted more of a hand in the actual casting. So then I started working for the company that did the Miami Vice television series. Ooh, there you go. That was an education. That's a podcast all in itself. <laughs> I bet. And uh, I won't get into all those stories, but, but, but the good thing about that was I was working with the company and at the end of the third season one of the producers took me out for dinner I think he liked me but nice. he took me out for dinner and he said leave there meaning the company I worked for he goes leave there and I guarantee you the vice account Ooh. and I'm like wow well, I don't you know I know it was it was a very it's a very interesting time because I you know I was still young and I felt badly and I didn't know what to do and, and so I said to him, I'll make you a deal. Hire me away from them and nice. offer me like a desk and an office and a weekly salary. Like, I, cause I didn't want to open my own place. I was terrified of that responsibility. I bet. So I didn't want to just leave there and like, I didn't know how to do that and yeah. open an <laughs> office. But if somebody just hired me away and said, okay, now you've got this job and Every Friday you'll get a paycheck or what? So I told him, I said, hire me away from there. That's smart. And 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 offer me a job. And he did, and they did. Wow. And uh, yeah, I know, because I wanted I wanted it, but I didn't want all the responsibility of yeah. opening an office. You know, that was scary. I bet. And so uh, then on, uh, then I did the fourth and the fifth season of Miami Vice. Dude. In their offices, you know, they paid the overhead, they paid the phone bill, they go. covered everything, and I got my little paycheck every week. So, yeah, um, and it actually wasn't; it was it was three times what I was making at the at the other place. Wow, yeah. you did yeah, good. Yeah, that, that was yeah, that was amazing, and um, so yeah, so I was um, I did that. And uh, and then I went on to do a few more jobs, and after I did that, uh, then I opened my own place. You know? So I've had my own office since 1990. That is cool. And now I'm rethinking all of that because of this uh, <laughs> this virus thing. Because now you know, with self taping, people can self tape. 
So you're over in Naples, let's say, yeah. and I have a casting in Miami. You don't have to drive two and a half hours each way so that I can put you on tape for five minutes. That's true, and I'm very you thankful know, you, for that. You don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, no, and you should be because years ago these poor actors would drive all over and or they would get a plane ticket that would cost them a fortune. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you guys now... With the advent of self-taping, it's uh, an amazing it's a, it's an amazing tool that you have. And if I if you know you have a job, so you work Monday through Friday nine to five, you can take time off if you book a job. Mm -hmm. But to to take five hours or more out of your day to have someone like me put you on tape, well, that's that's not necessary, but. Let's say you you go to um, you know you go to work during the day, you put yourself on ta on tape at eight o'clock at night. You email it to me. It's it it's just wonderful. So now I th I think to myself, well, do I need all of this office space anymore? Yeah, I've, I've got a lot of office space. Good point. I have two big casting rooms and waiting rooms and small offices and coaching rooms and you know so. Uh, yeah. It's time that I think people are rethinking stuff. Did you did you always have a mind for like business? Cuz that's so smart for you to be like, "Okay, here's the deal. I'll take it, but I'll like I'll take it if you do the business part of it." Like that's just a really smart move when taking on something like a Miami Vice account without the weight of it, you know? I don't think anyone would have thought of that. I think it was I think it was more of of just fear. Yeah. of having <laughs> You know, I mean, I, I don't really look at it as a oh, smart business now. Yeah. I think it was more fear <laughs> of, it, it worked uh, out. oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'll give you the credit anyway, though. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. But, yeah, but it did. It worked out great. And then I had my partner who did – I did all the principal casting. Cool. She did all the extras casting. And then we had our, our assistant, you know, and – um and then they paid, they paid all of us, you know, so we didn't have to worry about what we were casting. If we didn't cast a lot that week or we did, we, they just gave us a, a paycheck every week. And the three of us, the, the girl who handled the, the, uh, uh, extras casting myself who handled the principal casting. And then the third girl who did all the, the phones and the clerical and the typing up the contracts and things like that. Mm -hmm. The three of us are still the very, very, very best of friends. Oh, cool. That's got to be so As a fun. matter of fact, the one, the extras person, she and I were talking last night until late. And then right before I called you, I was on the phone with the other one. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. we're, const we're, we're still, like, so, so, so close. That's cool. You said it's an account? Is that how is that how casting works? Like, productions, you get, like, a contract from a production to do the casting? Sometimes, yeah, I guess sometimes we do. Yeah. Depends. Um, uh, I, I, did I call it the My Vice account? Is that what I, is that, uh, I, call I mean, it you that? might have. Uh, maybe I made it up. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, it sounds about right. It sounds like something that I, I could do, I would do. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> okay. So, okay. It's, it, yeah, it's, um, yeah, I guess you could, you could, I, if I'm doing a, if I've got a particular, like, like, okay, for instance, mm -hmm. Back when I first opened my place, my, the America's Most Wanted television series oh, cool. was in it being filmed. And I don't know why I really, really, really wanted the Miami Vice, uh, the uh, America's Most Wanted television show. I wanted the, yeah. I don't know. And I, I went after it, I went after it, I went after it. And then I finally got the America's Most Wanted account. So I was doing, for 20 years, I was doing... The America's Most Wanted in Florida. Wow, that's a long time. Yeah, and then they went. I know. Then they went off the air. It was a great show. Yeah, yeah, that was they one had a lot of recreation. A lot of criminals. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They did. They 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 um, they booked a lot of. I mean, they you know they arrested a lot of of the perpetrators. Yeah, it was it was great. And then you know, so I guess I. I guess this would be I had the America's Most Wanted account. Yeah. <laughs> if you will for Florida. There you go. Just put yeah. the put the sheet in your briefcase. 
and call it a day. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You did it. That's right. Because I'm I'm so fascinated by process and like how that stuff works. Because I've learned I've learned over the years that a lot of the uh, information, as far as uh, the entertainment industry goes, a lot of it is very hush hush. Like there's no like here's what you need to do and here's how it works. It's like you find out when you find out. And a lot of that is on set. Like, yeah. oh, that's how that works. You're like, oh, somebody could have just told me that, but nobody does. The best training ground an actor can can get is just by being on a set. Agreed. And learning. You know, to read a book and learn back to one means this. Take your mark means this. Yep. You know, uh, the slate is this. Background is this. Second team is this. First team is that. It, to try to memorize all those terms, it might be difficult. But you spend a couple of days on a set, you got it. Because yep. you, you're watching it in action. You're watching it in motion. And and so you, you know. you know, If you're a stand-in one day and they yell second team and you don't move, and then somebody gets over, comes over to you and says, hey, second team, yep. you will learn what second team means real fast. You know? Oh, yes. And so, yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. Did you, so when you're, so one of your first things that you did on your semi-own was Miami Vice of all things. That's, that sounds like you jumped yes. on the deep end. Oh. Yeah. You don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> the deep end, the deep end of the ocean. Yeah. Okay. Not even the deep end of the swimming pool. Right. There, yeah. I, I have so many, so many of my horror stories <laughs> of casting I come out of. Miami Vice, but they're good stories to tell because I always say to actors, I said, these are the stories that tell you what you should never do, yeah, what you should never tolerate, Ooh. what you should never accept. Yeah, I mean, um, there are things, you know, just, I mean, some of the things probably would not happen now sure. because of... There's not, usually there's, not, I mean, I remember in the middle of one callback session, it was a callback session. The actor was in the room. The uh, director was in the room. The producer was in the room and I was in the room. Ooh, the and in one. the middle, right? In the middle of this poor guy's audition, in the middle of his audition, the producer stood up and started to walk out of the room. <gasps> oh, oh. Oh. Very rude. And I stopped I stopped the callback. Ooh. And I, I told I looked at the actor. I said, Let's stop. And he looked at me and I go, We'll wait. And the producer got to the door and turned around and looked at me and said, Keep going. I said, No. Now you have to know. This was at, like towards the very end of the whole thing. Yeah. And I had already had it up to here. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, because there were so many rude things that had happened. Don't know. The one thing that I am with my actors is I'm very protective of them. I look out for them. Right on. I, I don't like people abusing them, being rude to them. Yeah. Don't do that. My actors are human beings and must be treated as such. And if you're not going to treat them as such, you're not, you're not, you can't play with them. Yeah. So as he was about to walk out the door, I said, uh, I looked at the actor, I said, stop. And the producer goes, keep going. I said, nope. And he looked at me, I said, there's no point in us going if you're not going to be watching this. The whole idea. Because he was one of the deciding factors. Yeah. What do you mean? Why are you? And even if, which this particular actor happened to be good, but even if he was horrible, even if he was absolutely horrendous. Yeah. How long is an audition? Half a minute? A minute? Good point. And you know what? You give the guy the courtesy because he got in his car and he drove an hour to get to you and he parked his car three blocks away and he put money in the meter and he walked and he got nervous and he memorized his dialogue and he did that for you. Yeah. So that means you yeah. have the courtesy of watching. And that's all I ask. That's all I ask. But see, nowadays, the, real, the reason I say I don't know that that really might happen too much anymore is because for the most part, for the last several years, the TV shows and the movies that I cast, the producers book right from tape. 
Oh, okay. So That's every good. yeah, so everybody sends in their videos and I go through them and I I watch them and I forward them on and sometimes I forward them on let's say to one person and then that person narrows it down and then it gets forwarded on to another person and so on. So for the most part, for, I can't say 100% of the time, mm-hmm. but for the most part, the people are not, um, it's not an in-person thing anymore. It's a, it's a tape thing. Right on, right on. Way but, more convenient. Yeah, way more convenient on the whole. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes we get caught. What I mean by that is, let's say an actor is not really very good. Mm-hmm. Let's say they, they are very, very nervous in front of people. Let's say they're very, very nervous in front of uh, the casting director, in front of the producer, in front of the director. Let's say they're, you know, they're a basket case. Yeah. <laughs> now, when they're self-taping, they're with their best friend. Right. And they're in a room. Right. And their best friend is going to videotape them and their best friend is going to read with them. And so they're calm and they're, and they're serene. And let's say they, you know, the first 40 takes, they mess up, but at take 41 and take 42. Okay. Now they're feeling comfortable. And now they, so sometimes what happens is we get a self tape from somebody who has been doing this and doing this and doing this for the last hour and a half, two hours until we finally receive a beautifully clean self tape. Right. We just don't know the backstory of that self tape. Good point. Good point. So then we book some poor guy <laughs> and he goes, Uh oh, now what do I do? Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. So every once in a while we get caught. We do, honestly. Yeah, it makes sense. But not often. It's part not often. Part of the game. So when you, you did yep. seasons of Miami Vice, what's the longest you've worked on a job? Probably America's Most Wanted, right? Well, yeah, but that wasn't as um, intense because it would be an episode of America's Most Wanted, maybe two episodes, and then they wouldn't come back to town for three months because right. America's Most Wanted shot all over. Oh, they did not. Oh, right, right, right. Wherever the, wherever the incident occurred is where they filmed. Got it. We just happen to have a lot of crime in Florida. <laughs> but um, yeah, for, yeah, it's Florida true. man keeps them busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we've done we did a an interesting show a few years back called Truth is Stranger Than Florida. Uh, great title. And it was for Dis- I think it was for Discovery Channel, and we did like ten episodes. I think it was, and they were they were crime. Story, like weird crimes that took place mm-hmm. in Florida. Yeah. Sure. So there's been a lot of those kinds of shows. We also did Unsolved Mysteries. But those, again, were, you know, they would do a couple here, and then they would go elsewhere, and then they'd come back and do a couple. But I guess the longest-running show that I did would be Burn Notice or The Glades. Ooh. Those are good. There's a lot of episodes of Burn Notice. Yeah. Yep, yep. And The Glades. And uh, The Glades, we had four seasons. Good run. Bloodline, we had three seasons. Bloodline was great. Yeah, Bloodline was really good. I was very sorry that that disappeared, but the reason that they went away was because um, the state of Florida did not give us any more film incentive. Really? The Money. tax incentives did it in? Huh. The tax incentive is what brought them here. They had written the show specifically to take place in the Keys. Yeah. And they were they had written for seven seasons. Really? They were planning to shoot seven seasons, yes. Wow. And they had gotten incentive money for the first couple of years. Yeah. So they didn't think that it would dry up. And the third season was a big, a, 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 a big rearrangement of everything so that we could give them some kind of money to keep them here. But they couldn't shoot elsewhere because they had, they had designated the Keys as literally one of their series regulars. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. the Keys was, uh, was part of it. Yeah. So they couldn't shoot it somewhere else. 
And so, um, unfortunately, because there was no more incentive money, they had to quit after the third season. And they would have gone on. They would have gone on because it was a very popular show. Yeah, it was awesome. I know the same thing happened yeah, to Ballers because yeah. Ballers was all about Miami. That's right. And that they rewrote we it out. We got two series, seasons. Yeah, yeah. It's so crazy how that works, isn't it? It's, you know, show business. Business is a bigger word. So, like, on paper, I guess that makes yeah. sense, but it's kind of lame. Yeah, that was a shame because um, I did the two seasons of Ballers when it was here. And after the second season, I received a phone call from the produce, one of the producers. And she said, I just wanted to tell you that we are not coming back in the fall. And I was hoping that maybe they were going to go to Atlanta. Because right. I said, well, if you go to Atlanta, I can I can do the casting out of Atlanta. Sure. And she's like, you yeah. know, no, we're going to <laughs> back to L.A. Yeah. Bummer. Yeah. And the government doesn't understand. The state does not understand. No, not that at all. when they give, if they give a show like a Ballers, $2 million, yep. Ballers could put $10 million back into the economy. Absolutely. $20 million back in, you know. Oh, yeah. Just they, yeah, they just don't get it. Nope, it's bonkers. It's a, you know, it's just they write it off. It's like, oh, it's movies. I'm like, you know how many people work on a set? Hundreds. And they're all staying at hotels and going out to eat. And, like, it's, it's a ripple effect. But, you know, if you don't know, you don't know, I guess. It's crazy. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. When you said, you know, hundreds of people work on a set, I was like, don't forget the people who come in from out of town who rent yeah. cars yeah. And, and eat at restaurants and stay at hotels. And go to the dry cleaners, and go to the drugstore, and take their families to Disney World on the weekends, mm-hmm. and you know it's like the ripple effect is so far-reaching. It is so far-reaching. It is. It, so, what was it about casting, though? Because if you grew up doing plays and your parents were musicians and stuff, you'd think your brain would be more wired toward the performing side of it. So, what was it about casting that made you want to do that specifically? I. I think I have somewhat of a of a business head. I think I do. I can see it. I always, I always, yeah, I always laugh and say I should have been a lawyer because <laughs> when actors are not getting paid what they're supposed to get paid, I always say to them, "Bring, bring me your contract." There you go. Bring me your contract. I'm, I want to look at it. And I and I have gotten many actors lots and lots of money there you by go. finding the loophole, by finding the yeah, and um, so I think that I – I don't think I had the stomach for the acting. Yeah, that makes sense. And I don't mean the actual acting, but I mean that side of the rejection. business. <laughs> constant rejection, you yep. know, standing in front of people and having them look me up and down as if I was like some inanimate object. Yep. And talking about me in front of yeah. me <laughs> but not not including me in the conversation yep. it was kind of degrading for yep. me and so um but i knew i wanted to be in this business so desperately sure and i and i didn't and then when the opening came up to do the um the casting it was like it, it resonated with me i said that's it that's it. Yeah. Just played the mm-hmm, right note for mm-hmm. you. That's cool. Do you do you think casting is something that like can be taught or do you think it's intuition? Cuz I feel like so much is like it's hard to explain. You know what I mean? Like oh, this is what it is. I can see it even if nobody else can. It's like it's such a specific I'm gonna tell you, skill. I'm going to tell you the answer to your question. When I was doing Miami Vice, the New York casting director for Miami Vice who happened to have been a very big casting director mm-hmm. happened to come down to Miami and we were chatting and I was young. Like vice was like my first, you know, job yeah. alone. Sure. And I looked at her and I said, how do you know? How do you know? How do you know that he's the right one? How do you know when you read a script who the, who the act, how do you know? Like, how do you know? Yeah. And you know what her answer was? And I will never forget it. I, I wrote a book called The Organic Actor. Yeah, yeah. Insider Secrets to Auditioning for Film and Television. And this is the title of one of my little chapters. And the title is, which is exactly her words, It's Just My Opinion. 
Ooh, that's good. And that's what she said. I remember we were standing at the elevator at the Alexander Hotel, which is where our production offices were. Mm -hmm. And I looked at her and I said, how do you know? And she goes, it's just my opinion. That's so crazy. It's like it's so simple but also so powerful. Uh Uh-huh. Wow. You think actors need confidence. It sounds like you guys need even more. (laughs) Well, sure, because... You know, I'm. If I present somebody to a to a producer, and they love them, I look like a hero. Right. If I pre- if I present somebody to a producer and they go, "Yeah, this guy's <laughs> not right at all." Yeah. Then then they think something was wrong with me. Sure. Because they don't remember the actor. They they certainly don't remember the actor, but they remember me. Right. Because you brought them. <laughs> Because I brought them, exactly. That's crazy. I think I've got a good eye. I've had a small handful of people work for me over the years Mm -hmm. who have helped me with the casting. And I I don't hire somebody and say, all right, you can put people on tape for me. All right, Mm -hmm. you can do my work. No, 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 no. I have to sit with them in the room. What I do is I do the casting. I make them sit on the couch. And after each person, I say, tell me your thoughts. Tell me your opinion. After each person. And then they tell me. And then I tell them good or I tell them why. No, that's no. Yeah. That's not how you're supposed to look at it. And I would say I've trained five people in 30 years. Yeah, because because it's not a. It looks like oh, it's. I've had people go oh, I want to I want to run your camera. I want to. It's like <laughs> what's your experience? Yeah, this, is, this takes a long time to to figure out. And even when somebody's been working with me for a while, I had a, a person working for me a few years back, and we were casting one of the TV shows, mm-hmm. and we were watching videos that had been sent in, and we were watching videos. And there was one girl, and my assistant on that day said, no, I go back up. I said, what do you mean, no? She said, no, I don't think she's right. And I looked at my assistant, and I said, she's perfect. And my assistant looked at me and said, I I don't see it. I said, well, let me show you. Yeah. And we had a long conversation, and I said, I said, submit her. Okay. And the girl and the girl booked because I know. Yeah. Because I know because I've been doing it for so long. I know what they look for. I know when they say A, they really mean B. I know that. Right. You know, like I know these things where where other newer people might not get it. Sure. But I guess it it takes time and it does take time and instincts and and I think because of the fact that I'd been in theater since I'm a little kid. Right. I did have a, a background. You know, there are some casting directors who like I remember when um I think it was Louisiana got their incentive mm-hmm. and they were blowing up and I remember, you know, somebody who was craft service on a set decided I, I think I want to be a casting director now. Oh. It's like, no, no, no. <laughs> you don't go from craft service. <laughs> you know, because it looks easy from the outside. Oh yeah, just pick the people. Yeah. Oh, no, it's not that easy. No, this is a whole other side. Do you so thinking back, yeah. has there been any roles in the past that you found like that were particularly difficult to cast? Well, the ones that are um uh, different kinds of roles when you're looking for I don't know the the beautiful 28 year old twins yeah. there was one role <laughs> speaking of twins there was one role that I did this was this was probably one of my more brilliant casting coups yeah I was doing a move a TV show rather uh called Maximum Bob nice a long time ago and the the director was Barry Sonnenfeld. 
and Barry had a had a big name, and he had been he cast a lot of stuff. He was a, a, I mean, he directed a lot of movies, TV show. Mm-hmm. And Barry said he was looking for two bumbling deputies. Okay. And he wanted twins. But he said he did not want real actors. He goes, I don't want real actors because they're going to come in and they're going to act and I don't want them to act. He goes, I want you to find real twins, real sets of twins. Ah. Well, I found a couple of sets of twins who were just awful. <laughs> and he's, I said, well, this is what I'm going to find. I don't want real actors. I don't want real actors. So then I brought in actors who looked alike, like, you know, like, a guy who was five foot six and another guy who was five foot six and they were both, they both had dark hair and they were both round and overweight. And you know, like, so I, no, that didn't work. (laughs) So I said to myself, well, I'm going to have to do something. He can't know about it. And what I did, I knew this set of twins out of Orlando. They were actors. Mm -hmm. They did improv. They worked at Sac Theater, which was a, an improv theater at the time. I think they're still around. I'm not sure. Yep, great one. And I contacted them, and I asked them if they could come audition for me for this TV show. It was recurring. Mm-hmm. It was recurring roles. And, of course, they had to drive down to Miami because this is before self-tapes. Right, right. And they they came into my office, and I said to them, we're going to play a game I said, because we cannot let this man know that you're real actors, because he was really adamant about the fact that he does not want real actors. Right. He wants real, you know. And I had a whole scenario. I told one of them that they were going to be the intelligent one, and one of them they were going to be the dumb one. Love it. And that they were both going to be on camera at the same time, but one of them was going to pretend that he didn't know he was on camera, so he was going to be looking around the room <laughs> when it was his turn to speak. He he was going to miss his cues, and the smart one was going to, like, hit him, like, hey, oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and turn. But because they were funny, because they were comedians, yeah. they were improv guys, they knew how to make it funny. It was, when I tell you, <laughs> it was brilliant. Genius. It was absolutely hysterical. So when I sent it in, Barry called me and said, see, I knew you could find, I knew you could find, and I just laughed and went, "Uh uh-huh. Yeah, yep, yep. And at the end, yep, I did what you asked. See, I told you they were out there. Yep, you're right. At the end of, I think we shot 10 episodes. At the end of the 10 episodes, he, he called me and he goes, so, I heard what you did with the twins. Oh. And I, I, (laughs) <laughs> I kind of like laughed, like, uh oh, you know, I got caught. Yeah. And he goes, he said to me, he goes, You got me. Nice. I said, I had to. Yeah. I said, you, I never would have found what you were looking for otherwise. I, I had to. He said, Well, you did a good job. Thank you very much. You know, so um, that that was probably one of my best casting coups you know yeah because uh sometimes i do know better you know sometimes they don't i'm a casting director right. that's my job that's what i do i know about casting yeah and he knows about directing and someone else knows about wardrobe and you know i'm not going to tell wardrobe what kind of clothes to put my actors in right so don't tell me how to cast you know yeah. i mean like we all have our specialties <laughs> Yeah, that's why there's different departments. But yeah, that's correct. So yeah, so that was probably my best. That's so my funny. Best casting. I like that that story. Yeah. It's like you've got to be creative outside of the box. I I find it hilarious when there's castings for like, we want real people. I was like, I don't think a real doctor is going to be on casting networks. I was like, I don't understand. Probably not. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, I like when they ask for real people. I go, well, these these. These are real people. Yeah, it's like if actors are not them, people. If I cut them, they're going to bleed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're real people. That's so yeah. funny. That So is there, looking back, is that would that also constitute as like some one of your most proud moments as far as casting goes? Of like this, this one, I was like, yeah, killed it. 
Yeah, that one for sure. That was the, pretty the twins good. Was probably. Yeah, that 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 goes to the top of the list. Yeah. <laughs> um, Rightfully so. Yeah. Um, I uh, several of the roles on Bloodline were were really cool because um, they they allowed me to cast a lot of recurring roles and I was able to bring in some of my guys that are good actors but are not mainstream. Right. You know, like one of the characters we booked, his character name was Rafi. I think they spelled it R A F I, Rafi. And he had tattoos from head to toe, gold teeth, and the actor had shaved the sides of his head and bleached his hair blonde, like yellow. Yeah. <laughs> like not a real color. He was, it's he walked look. in, I looked at him, I went, you look awesome yeah. <laughs> you know and uh, and he booked it and he, he worked on a, they loved him loved him and the character originally was called mohawk man Beautiful. <laughs> that's what they called it mohawk man <laughs> and so he but he so he didn't have a mohawk but he said i figured well i could just make myself look a little different because you know mohawk might kind of indicate you want me to look different right so yeah so i did i did some really wonderful um, some really wonderful casting on 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 that show. That was that was a good show. Yeah. Right on. Do you do you is yeah, it yeah. is there ever oper- like moments where somebody walks in and like I'm sure there's a bunch where they walk in and you're like that's what I'm looking for, but do you ever have moments where you find someone who isn't quite there, but you're like I can work with this. I think this is it. Or do you even have the time to do something like that? I do. I do have the time, and I do that a lot. Yeah. So, um, yeah, if somebody comes in and I think that they have potential and potentially they could book it, then I do. I do take time. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Has there been, has went from the time that you started casting to this massive career that is award winning, might I say, uh, as, mm-hmm. has there been anything that's like, wasn't what you expected going into it? Because a lot of people, when they have a job that they want to do for a really long time, and then when they get to it, they're like, oh, okay, it's like I want to be an actor, but I didn't realize it was 16-hour days. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Was there anything from your side of the casting director's chair that you're like, oh, okay, I didn't realize this was part of it? Um, Not the job itself, but some of the people. Oh, right. Like I, I, did, a show, I did a show years ago, many years ago. And I got a call from the producer's assistant. And basically, he was asking me to find girls for the producer. Mm-hmm. I mean, without, you know. Oh. And I, I said to him, I said, I said, I'm not sure. I knew exactly what he was saying. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I'm not clear. I said, are you asking me to procure women <laughs> for the producer? I said, I, I, I think I'm. I'm not understanding what you're saying, right? That's yeah. not what, what I'm hearing, is it? And he was like, no, 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 no. I said, well, I didn't think so. Yeah, yeah. You know, and <laughs> uh, that was, that that kind of stuff I don't tolerate. And and Good. over the years, when I meet a producer that I, I get a vibe, mm-hmm. that they're not, they're, you know, they're just a side of sleazy, I, I will say... Um. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I don't think this is a good job for me. I don't I don't think we should work together. Sure. Again, so much intuition that like you just have to be operating on a different level to kind of pick that up. And you're around so many people all the exactly. time. You've got to be pretty good at sensing people out. Right. You're around so many actors all the time because you're doing the casting. Do you find that there's a common mistake mm. that everyone makes all the time? That you're like, if you could just don't don't do that or do this more. Well, when they come in to audition, yeah, which now you know is less and less, but mm-hmm. one of the big common mistakes is that instead of coming in to audition and working on their dialogue until it's time to do their audition, they uh, they start chatting with oh, people yeah. Oh, yeah. in the waiting room. Uh-huh. So they're not working on their dialogue you know i say don't talk to each other before the audition yep. wait until your audition is over go out 
outside to the parking lot, meet your friend at Starbucks, talk all you want. But when you are in the in the waiting room and you are working um you're working with you're talking to another person, yeah. you're distracting them, you're distracting yourself, mm-hmm. and potentially you're distracting others who might be sitting near you. And I always say the last several minutes before your audition, this the last several minutes before your audition are the most crucial because you don't, you just, you know, they will, that can throw you off. Yeah. I mean, if you're waiting in the waiting room and, um, I don't know, let's say you're wearing a pair of blue jeans and a, and a white t-shirt. Mm-hmm. And you think that that was what you're supposed to wear for your audition. And you start talking to somebody and somebody looks at you and says, I always heard white was a really bad color to wear on camera. <laughs> now that plants the seed. Sabotage. And now you're, yeah, yep. yes. Yep. And then you go into the audition and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm wearing a white shirt. It's the worst color in the world. I shouldn't have been, you know. People's, and people might say things to you not even intending to throw you off. Yeah. Just just trying to make conversation, you know, so they they go, wow, you, you know, or you're wearing blue jeans? I thought this guy was a little more upscale. <laughs> and now you're like, oh, my God. I'm in Meanwhile, you don't even realize that we're videotaping you from the waist up. Right, right. So we don't even know what your pants look like. But so I that's like one of my biggest pet peeves also is please don't talk to each other. Don't distract yourself or others before your audition. Yeah. Focus. Uh, yeah. I've, I've actually had to go up to, to numerous people on, you know, when I'm conducting auditions to say, please. Please stop. You're distracting the other people. Because then invariably what happens is that person comes into the office and I say, do you have any questions? No, 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 I'm good. (laughs) And then they open their mouth and then they flub up the line and I go, "Uh, what happened? Right. I don't know. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. It's like, okay, you are now wasting my time. Right. There's a line. Because you should, yeah, you should have been working on the dialogue out in the waiting room. Yeah. yeah. It's it, it's it's distracting. So that that one of the things that I've seen. And I always tell actors, please memorize your dialogue. Yeah. Even if you, you know, it's just it makes such a huge impression if you are memorized. I agree. I As agree. opposed to holding the script and looking down, looking up, looking down, looking up, looking down, looking up. Yep. You know. Yep. It distracts. It distracts. That's so- why I started teaching so many years ago. Yeah. Because people would come in and I would see all these tiny little faux pas and I would adjust them on the casting. You know, just tiny little things. And I would adjust them. And then one day some actor said to me, w- would you like, teach a class with all this stuff? And I was like. No, no, I, no, I'm I'm not a teacher. I, yeah. <laughs> I go, yeah, but you possess all this knowledge about auditioning. True. And we, we don't know this stuff. We need to know this stuff. And that's really how I started teaching, was because actors asked me if I would please come and and teach. There you so go. it was, uh, yeah, really. That's that's how I started teaching. Because I would always work with actors in the way in the uh, casting room, right? You know, I would I would coach them, I would work with them, and I would tweak them. And in a matter of a few minutes, I could take an okay audition and turn it into a really really good audition just by a few little tweaks. So there you go. yeah, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do, you, do you like teaching? Do you find it something that like you'd never love. considered, but now yeah, that's cool. I love teaching. My minor is in education, and actually my masters is in the School of Education. Oh, perfect. My con- Yeah, my concentration is in something called, well, 
it's interdisciplinary arts, which is in the School of Education, and the concentration is drama therapy. Oh, so, nice. And, yeah, and I undertook that because I wanted to try to help actors with their audition anxiety. That's, That's really, so cool. Look yeah, at, look at so you I went back to school duty. and I got a master's. I know, I know, in my spare time. Yeah. <laughs> I got other stories, too, but that's, yeah. that's enough. Exactly, that's yeah. enough. That's for, that's for the late yeah. night edition. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah. exactly. I think that's really, really cool. I think it says a lot about you as well as like a casting director to go that much further for your actors. I just think it's cool. So well done. It's, it's, it has. I've been able to help an awful lot of actors. I do a private... Like I call it pick Lori Wyman's brain session <laughs> because nice. people would call me and say, they would call the office. Yeah. I'd like to uh, see if I could talk to Lori, pick her brain for a little bit. <laughs> like, no, just cause you know, I don't have that kind of time. So one day my assistants were like, Lori, we get calls all the time. So I put together this little program called pick Lori Wyman's brain. And if you, it's not, I don't do acting coaching per right. se, but I do like business coach, you know, the business coaching. If sure. you want to be an actor and how, how do you take your career from here to there? And how do you know, what do I do and how do I get better? And, but not acting coaching. You know what I mean? I, d I had one yesterday with a mother for her son and oh, cool. we went over his actor's access account. We went over his casting networks account. We, we went through all of his social media. We went through all of his stuff. What can he use? What does he need? What should he add? So it's just been a very, um, I enjoy it immensely. I really, really do. Good. I think I think that shows yeah. in your work because if you if you like what you're doing, it comes through. Yes, exactly. I'm into it. I'm into it. Well, I've used there up a ton go. of your time, huh? Lori. This was way fun. Yeah. Thanks so much for chatting and hanging out. Well, thanks, Brian. Just pull out the stuff that <laughs> you know <laughs> that doesn't sound so good. <laughs> oh, it all sounds good because you're good. So before I let you go, I gotta ask, uh, where can people find you online? Um, actors can find me at theorganicactor.com. So T H E, the organic actor.com. Love it. Love it. All your stuff is there. Highly recommend your classes and all that stuff. And you've got resources on your website. That's great. Everyone yeah. needs to check it out. And well, thank you. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. That's balance with two L's. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps. Let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I made a Patreon. So if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows about a bunch of random things, you can now do that at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, Victor, JC, and Christina. Your support means so much to me, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.